Yo, what up? It's your boy Owen JJ Stone, aka Black Gritty. Welcome to another episode of Gritty Nights. The Sixers still suck. The second round Sixers suck. And I've said it for the last four or five years, and every year I try to give them a chance, but I know better. You know better. We all know better. And I am not a paid pundit. I'm not somebody who has to write articles, has to go sit in a room and interview somebody. So I don't have to pontificate and placate to this system of what's going on in Philadelphia. The Sixers suck. Shut it all down. Trade everybody. Tra- starting with Joel Embiid. Now, I, I, people apparently out here defending him. Thank goodness it ain't in my feet. Thank goodness it ain't nobody saying nothing to me about it. Trade Joel Embiid. You got MVP, and then you sit down in this interview, and you say what you said, you're out. I'm done. I can't do nothing with you, okay? <laughs> I can't do anything with a seven-foot-two punk that doesn't want to play basketball. I mean, wh- what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do with a guy like this? No, the league doesn't even deal with centers anymore. Like the league is built around them, and, and and Jokic is out there. At least he's got a guard, but that's usually how it happens anyway. You need you need you need a guard, somebody to go out there and help you. But when you hear your your MVP say, I "Can't win alone," um, I can't win alone. Yeah, and James, we just can't win alone. You know that's why basketball is played five on five. So, you know, we just need everybody to just, you know, try to keep finding ways to get better, and uh, you know, we'll we'll be fine. And. <laughs> That's a a quoted retweet from Damian Lillard, who everybody wants to go to Philly. I do too. But he ain't coming here to play with that guy. He said, huh? And his quoted tweet, he said, huh? So I can't do it alone. You got outscored by Tyrese Maxey and Tobias Harris for a game. You put up 15 points in a game seven of the second round when you're the MVP of the league. Tobias Harris had more points than you. Damn near P.J. Tucker had more points than you. And when you say you can't do it alone, the Celtics scored 100 points. Tatum had 51 of them. It looked like he damn sure was doing it alone. It looked like he was damn sure doing it alone. And his counterpart kicked in 25. But shit, those two players alone almost beat the Sixers 88 points they put up. Two people. And I'm just like, what are we doing? My phone's blowing up. Everybody upset. Everybody's mad. All right? So Joel's got to go. I don't care if he's MVP, first MVP to get traded. His MVP has zero value. And I and again, pundits and people that I like and I'm friends with, Elliot Shore Parks talk about his MVP has value. His MVP means absolutely jack shit to me now. In 20 years when I look back at it, I won't say anything, but they didn't have no heart, and he punked out, and he scored 15 points in the game seven after choking away at game six, up 3-2. At least when I look back at Allen Iverson, you know what I say? That man was the only man on the team with the team to beat Shaq and Kobe that year. They were going undefeated, and that man with heart, and a team, mostly heart and will, said not today. You all ain't going to just beat us, sweep us. At least they got one win. Game one came out and fought. So that, that's why people look back at Allen Iverson like they do. Ain't nobody going to look back at Joel Embiid and be like, oh, man, he put I, I mean, I mean, he's been pushing the campaign, like I said, the local media. Oh, he's so good. He's so good. He's so good. And I, I think he's good, too. But guess what? He's also always injured. He's just as injured as he is good. He's just as mentally weak as he is good. He's just as soft as he is good. So looking back on it, what do I have to hold on to as a one shining moment? What do I have? Well, Allen Iverson, I got three. I got an MVP. I got to the finals. And I made a giant bleed. (laughs) Okay? I at least got that. So what do I have with this dude? Nothing. And oh, and give him, he's 30 years old and he's a center. And he's running out of time. He's running out of time with me. He can go. Joel B can go. Now I just spent the opening minutes on it. Just so you know where I'm standing at. Trade him. Why well, he's the MVP of the league and I can get something for him. Tobias, I just said y'all scored Joel B. Thank you for your service. Thank you for being a man and stepping up at every loss and being the first person 
to do interviews. I do notice that. I, I clown you a lot and I rip on you about your money. But as a human being, as a person, you're a great man. You're a good man. I, I appreciate that part of your 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 game. But on the court, normally, bro, you're a six man and it's not your fault. You got thrust in the position you did. I took the check too. But I mean, I can't have you here. Thank you for your service. You got to go too. James Harden hit the strip club, homie. Back to Houston, you go. Player option, you ain't going to take the option. Nobody wants you here. Nobody believes in you. You had 10 days off. That's the only reason you could turn back the hands of time. And then you had another lucky duck situation where you did it again because most of the time in the playoffs, you fall short. Pressure hits you. And you are what you consistently become and be each and every year. Yes, he made a championship as a sixth man with Kevin uh, Durant and uh, Russell Westbrook. <laughs> and he was a sixth man. He made the uh, Western Conference Finals and then choked away one for 22 from three. Scoring two points in the fourth quarter. These are all things that happen too. So yeah, he made one. And yeah, the breaks happen and people get hurt and things go bad and blah, blah, blah. But what's consistent is him coming up short in big games with pressures on him. Last year with the Sixers, the ball didn't find me. You're the point guard, bro. You're running the show. And if you didn't, that just shows more of your weakness by not doing anything about it. So James can go. Be gone. Peace out. I don't appreciate anything about your service besides getting rid of Ben Simmons. You might as well have been Ben Simmons. At least when we lost with Ben Simmons, we are bad. He didn't shoot one basket. This dude ain't shot no baskets and we get blown out. <laughs> James Harden scored nine points in a game seven closeout game. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. P.J. Tucker came here for toughness. We need eight P.J. Tuckers. I don't care about Niang grabbing his knee. That was nothing. This doesn't matter to me. No big deal. Glenn Rivers. Let me just play, because I'm, I'm from the future. Let me just play what I said about Glenn the day before he got hired. Let me tell you something. You advocated for Doc Rivers, the most 3-1 losing his lead coach in history. Tied for first 3-2 lead coach in the history. This is September 30th, 2020. He ain't, KG ain't walking through this door. Do I want another cook? He got all the cooking. He was the GM, the general manager, the proud boy got to pick everything and still couldn't win. Give me a better coach, a more qualified coach, Black Gritty. You know what? It doesn't. I I want Chris Quinn, somebody out of Miami, somebody who's been around Pat Riley and Pat Scrolls. I'm Vince Quinn's brother. Of, Chris. I'm, I'm trying to find things outside the box. Like, I mean, I don't well, know. Wait, 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 no, 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 no. Black lose. Gritty. All I'm saying is, kids. Black what? Gritty, all I'm saying is that you got to bring somebody in here that Ben and Joel are going to respect and listen to. I'm not even saying Doc Rivers is going to lead this team to a championship. I got to see these guys play at their potential level together. That's the real issue right now. This team's not ready to win a title. Who can get through to these guys to know how to play together? Okay. Well, let me just say, I, at that point, ain't nobody going to get through to him because the same thing with all the teams in, in Philadelphia, except for Jeffrey Lohr. I mean, he's an all right guy. The ownership is just trash. We still got Kalanja clowns in this. That's enough of that. You get the point. I told you it was going to happen. I told you it was going to happen with this coach. Now, this game, I can't put on him, but I can put on a 3-2 lead and him losing it again for the eighth time, him being the losing his coach continued and – expanding the bar. I can always I can also say look look at how Miami's playing. Do you think you might not have wanted somebody off of Miami staff to come up here and bring some toughness and strategy to the Sixers? Oh, I look like a genius cuz they in the finals for the third time in 4 years. So yeah, Chris Quinn, I I I'm looking at basketball. I'm looking across the league. Give me Sam Cassell over this dude. But now I don't even want Sam cuz he's been tainted by this uh, coaching staff for too long. Can't stand it. And you guys are Jack. Why can't you call him Doc Rivers? Yeah, it's come just on, a zoom come off, on, Black zoom off thing. Look, when he gets us out of the second round into the third round, <laughs> oh, come, come on. I'm not calling him. Come Doc on. Rivers. Hey, his mama called him Glenn. I'm going to call him Glenn until he gets me to the third round. Don't question me again about it. It will not happen. Period. Point blank. Let it go. Okay? Now, uh, uh, I kind of uh, like that. Like... And there I was right again. Still calling him Glenn because I knew it was going to happen. Just a total embarrassment. We got to blow up everything. We need to start over. Get rid of Mori, too. Get rid of Brand, too. The whole front office. Huh. Clap your hands, everybody. Second round 76ers on the way.